Hey guys, how is everyone doing tonight? I'm not sure, but I think something may be glitching. So I don't know how to fix it. I'm not going to be able to fix it in like two seconds. Okay, you know well, we'll go ahead and we'll carry on with the stream for tonight because we don't have a lot left. And I'm not full. Okay, yeah. I have. Um, I have been streaming the trial, you know, ever since I said I was going to do it. I missed one night and now I'm trying to catch up. Um, they did not have trial Friday, thank God, because you guys, when I said I'm going to stream it, you know, at night for the ones that can't watch it during the day, like me, I don't think I was really thinking about the fact that they're literally five hours long, like, or like five or six hours long, you know. Um, so when you start streaming at nine o'clock at night, that's a lot. Um, but, but I'm at least going to finish out this week. I know Monday night, um, I'll probably stream Monday night, but I'm going to be out of town Tuesday. I will be driving all day. And then Wednesday I will be in Arkansas for the Josh Duggar sentencing. So next week is going to be really up in the air. Um, I might work on something, uh, Tuesday, but I don't know how much I'm really going to get done Tuesday. And then Wednesday, like I said, I'm going to be at Josh Duggar's trial. And as soon as I can get to where I can go live and give you guys all the details of the trial, I'll do that Wednesday. Um, I, I don't know what's going on with the camera, why it's glitching. For once, I actually have a picture perfect picture, it appears. But for some reason, it's gl glitching. I'm not sure. But if you guys are not that bothered by it, um, I'll be okay with it. We're going to go ahead. We're going to jump in to the rest of uh, marijuana, alcohol, opiates, I believe. Did you ever have an understanding that Mr. Depp had anxiety syndrome? I knew Mr. Depp had anxiety. <laughs> And how did you come to be aware that Mr. Depp had anxiety? She told me that. Do you recall having any conversation with Mr. Depp was bipolar? There was some question about uh, bipolar disorder diagnosis, but I do not remember any specifics about the discussion. Do you recall having a conversation with Mr. Depp about a bipolar diagnosis? No. What behaviors did Mr. Depp acknowledge that should be changed? Uh, certainly his drug use uh, and his turning to drugs for to help relieve a lot of the psychic pain that he was experiencing. In working with Mr. Depp, would you agree that he had fundamental that Mr. Depp had fundamental issues with anger? I, I, I would say that he expressed having issues with anger. I think what he just said right there would help Johnny Depp's side because he was like, uh, he, he basically said that because Johnny Depp was going through a lot of like emotional uh, issues that that's why he was uh, doing drugs. Ain't that what he basically just said? Like because he was uh, having a lot of anxiety, he was doing drugs. Mr. Depp expressed having issues with anger. Did Mr. Depp express having issues of anger towards Amber? He expressed having anger towards her. Yes. Do you recall what reasons Mr. Depp told you as to why he was expressing anger towards Amber? Working with Mr. Depp, was he ever suspicious of Amber having affairs? I can recall now he expressed uh, feelings of jealousy. I don't remember if it was about affairs. Do you recall any more detail about what Mr. Depp was feeling jealousy toward Amber about? Working with Mr. Depp, um, 
Did you see that he, Mr. Depp had any issues with patients? Yes, he wasn't patient. What is your understanding about uh, issues that Mr. Depp had with Amber? It, it was a very chaotic relationship with uh, a lot of fluctuations and ups and downs and uh, lots of difficulty with emotional expressions and um, lots of anger in both places and you know, high intensity affect and emotional expression. But from what we've heard, Johnny Depp, uh, Johnny Depp's other relationships, it, it wasn't like that. You know what I'm saying? Like even after Johnny Depp and those women, except uh, Elaine, whatever, um, but like Juanola Ryder, Vanessa, like all of them women say that he was a great man. It wasn't chaotic. It was chaotic with his relationship with Amber because Amber was psychotic, I think. I hope the jury's catching on to that. A lot of love, a lot of uh, disappointment, a lot of fears. Dr. Blaustein, I'm showing you what's been marked as Blaustein Exhibit 3. Do you recognize this document? Yes. What, what is it? It's uh, my invoice billing document. This is from your, your file? Correct. And keep this document in the ordinary course of business? Correct. And this uh, billing invoice is for, is for Johnny Depp, correct? Correct. And so where it says 10 to 14 um, from, your, from your billing records, would this be the, is this your understanding the first time you, you met with Mr. Depp? My phone, yes. And in total, if we look at the number of sessions you either met or spoke to Mr. Depp that weren't uh, canceled or he didn't show up, um, my count it comes to, to 19, uh, eight, 18 times you met with Mr. Depp. Does that sound about right? Looks like 18 times. Did you have any concerns about any of the amounts of medications that Mr. Depp was taking? Uh, I had concerns about the Adderall that I would have expressed to him. And what were the concerns about the Adderall? Uh, I, again, I don't recall the specific conversations, but I would have been asking about uh, uh, how he was diagnosed to have ADHD or under what circumstances he would take that, especially if he wasn't currently working. Did you ever talk to Mr. Depp about um, what he did when when Marilyn Manson would visit? No. When you were working with Mr. Depp, um, did you have any understanding whether Mr. Depp was still abusing uh, drugs and alcohol or not? Yes. But you do recall that there were times in your working with Mr. Depp where he had breakthrough uses of drugs or alcohol. Yeah, that was relative sobriety was not complete, yes. And that's what you mean by uh, breakthrough usage, that, it, that his sobriety Mr. Depp's sobriety was not complete. Uh, well, relative sobriety. Again, I said relative sobriety because he did continue to use marijuana throughout, almost entirely throughout the time that I knew him, uh, with a short time exception, I think. So I call it relative sobriety, and there'd be some breakthrough uses of other substances. Okay. And when you say breakthrough usage, just so everyone understands, what do you mean by that? Uh, he was trying to be sober. He was working on sobriety. And uh, by breakthrough uses, I mean, so, sobriety would mean the abstinence of using the substance. And so the breakthrough would be on a particular time he would have used the substance that he was trying to be sober of, abstinent of. Okay. So in, a, in addition to marijuana, in the time you saw Mr. Depp from October of 2014 through January of 
of 2015, there were other times, there were times where Mr. Depp broke his sobriety with drugs or alcohol in addition to marijuana, correct? I believe so, yes. How did you come to that understanding? You would have told me. Do you know why um, Mr. Depp stopped seeing you? I didn't know he was preparing to leave to Australia to go to work. And uh, I assumed that, that was the reason. But he hasn't returned to you since he went to Australia in, in 2015, correct? Correct. And, and did anyone inform you as to why he stopped seeing you? No. Last thing, Exhibit 9 are notes reflecting your care of Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Uh, and you kept these notes in the ordinary course of business, correct? Correct. And you kept these notes in a file for Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. And this is page one of those notes from October 2nd, 2014, correct? Correct. Again, it'll, it'll, there will be plenty of places where I don't remember, I can't read what they say. They are for my current detention purposes only in these in these particular notes. Okay. So that's what makes them process notes. In working with Mr. Depp, did he discuss any um, abuse he received as a child or an adolescent? Yes. And do you recall any difficulties that Mr. Depp was talking to you about in his relationship with his fiance? No, not from this. What does it say? Such a pain in the ass. Do you recall why he was saying Amber was a pain in the ass? No. Because she was. <laughs> and what, what's the next thing say? Uh, well, in boxes about his kid's mom. Okay. And uh, again, I think I have the word destructive. What was destructive referring to? You know, I don't know. No, I don't. Uh, something relationship 14 to 15 years, mother of my kids. Uh, out of that official, officially. Um, he didn't want to be his dad. I think and I'm not it's abandoning like his dad. And then below kids, it says uh, clear, better. Uh, that makes sense. To be all this needed me to be. That makes sense. Johnny Depp apparently expressed to him that he didn't want to be like his dad, you know, by leaving. Uh, when obviously when him and Vanessa split ways, I guess he had a concern that his children would uh, look at him as like abandoning them the way he looked at it when his dad did it to them. That makes sense. And the fact that he even thought about that uh, shows that he's a good dad because some dads don't care. All this week or all this work, I don't know. If we turn to the next page, uh, it says page mm -hmm. two. Yeah, and then what's the next line say? This violence rage that uh, we've had over a couple of years. Okay. And so what is Mr. Depp referring to there? <laughs> so do you recall that in, in working with Mr. Depp that he spoke about um, violence and rage in other relationships in addition to his relationship with Amber? Or rage and chaos. I uh, don't remember violence, but uh, I can remember rage and chaos. Now, again, the context of this is, is, is I had met him at this point. This is an initial telephone con consultation. So uh, to see whether or not he was going to start therapy with me. But in your working with Mr. Depp, was he talking about rage and chaos with relationships in addition to his relationship with Amber, correct? Yes, yes. What, what other relationships was he talking about rage and chaos? Again, I don't have the specific recollection, but I think it included his uh, uh, 
the, the mother of his children and, um, and arguments about uh, child, not, not child custody, child care or visitation or access to the children. On the left, it says uh, raise two kids, 15 and 12. And then below that, she tried to protect me. She tried to protect me too. You don't have to break you. My association now is his uh, sister, but uh, I don't. Uh, I don't think that's true. I don't have a specific recollection. No. Uh, wouldn't take fear. Wake up to fight devil. Wait, uh, wait up to fight devil. You know what that's referring to? Wait up to fight devil. I think he referred to a devil as um, some version of uh, internal depression and chaos that he felt. Something like an everyday phenomenon he felt he was uh, struggling. I think I think the label it as a devil. So, so Mr. Depp labeled, labeled um, as something he, that was internal to him as, as the devil? As, as, as a representation of something horrible inside of himself, that I would, would, would say. He was so calling Amber the devil. Amber the devil. The devil. He right. meant Amber. That's what he said. Oh, again, I don't think he ever said that, so I'm, I'm going to be careful here. Um, Hold on. Y'all know who we need to be concerned about? Is the lawyer back here? Y'all know there was like two days where there was like a lot of coughing, coughing, coughing. It wasn't all her, but it was her some of the time. And now I notice this is the second time she's went for a Kleenex to blow her nose. I think she's sick. So we need to be praying for this one right here. She ain't got COVID. The devil was the representation of the battle that he had many days when we woke up with depression and, uh, anxiety and fears that he had. Did Mr. Depp ever refer to himself as a monster? I remember the word monster in my office, but I don't know if it's referring to himself or not. Maybe that'll be more revealed as we go forward. Now, turning to last stage Devil. 12, um, which is page four of this exhibit. And, and there's a three at the top, correct? Yeah. And then to the right, it says, that says Amber fiance, correct? Correct. And then uh, there's work through, work through anger, just below that. And we're saying work through anger, is that referring to, to his anger towards Amber? I think what uh, he was saying then is that part of his goal of therapy was to work through anger that he and his fiance had to, towards each other. Um, then going back to the left, um, better with girl about it. Self-destructive, hard to not put in front of me. You know what self-destructive? Hard not to put in front of me means is referring to. I think it, the self-destructive was his drug use. So they are referring to it this time. I'm now looking at Blastian 13, uh, page, which has a page four. Are, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. And at the top it says uh, Johnny slash Debbie, correct? Correct. All right. Um, and then the date it says 10 slash what? That's 10 7. And so it says JD 10 21 14, correct? Correct. Uh, a lot of things work, intense work, fatigue, need a minute. Here I can say with certainty of his words, shit with my girl. And, and what's that referring to? Difficulty he was having with Amber. And do, you, do you recall what he was talking about? What difficulty he was having with Mr. Depp was having with Amber? No. 
the next line looks like it says she refuses to accept. Correct. Do you know what Amber refuses to accept? What Mr. Depp was referring to? No. And to the right, it says Amber what? Amber Wedding. You were, were you talking at this point about potentially Mr. Depp and Amber marrying? Yes, he was talking about that, yeah. Okay. Um, and then what does it say under she refuses to accept? Uh, wedding February. And then what's next? Uh, not want to go to marriage, 51 years old. Did, were there any discussions that you had with Mr. Depp um, where he had concerns about the age difference between him and Amber? Uh, I don't think so. No. Okay. But what does it say under 51 years old? Uh, a lot of life experiences. Uh, you're being my mother and psychotic sister. What did you understand Mr. Depp was referring to where you wrote you're being my mother and psychotic sister? I think that's something that he said to, he told me, he said to her. That he, he was, that, that Mr. Depp said to, to Amber, you're being my mother and psychotic sister? That's what I would think, yes. Okay. Who's a psychotic the sister? Time, high tolerance for marijuana. Who has a high tolerance for marijuana? Uh, he did. Right, turn <laughs> to the next page, um, which is Blaustein 15, and we're at, I have a number five on the top there. What is it? Self something? Self destructive very early. And Mr. Depp is talking about himself being self destructive very early? Yes. Okay. How is he being, how is Mr. Depp describing that he was self destructive? Well, I think, I, again, I don't recall, but let's continue and maybe something's there. So he was trying to, he was trying to be sober from booze and, and pills, correct? Correct. Okay. And then, and it, was it you who said a reward? Yeah, and I asked him about where where can he get rewards elsewhere. Where did he get reward? I immediately asked him where did he get rewards elsewhere, and there he said um, in the past and DNA ecstasy cocaine. So, so what did you understand where he wrote MDMA ecstasy cocaine? I. It's not quite sure, but that those are things that he had used in the past. Now, there's there is another possibility that I had asked him specifically about that, but I don't think so. It's more likely that, uh, that those are things he had used in the past. Do you know what pills Mr. Depp was referring to, to be sober from? Uh, I know oxycodone was uh, the main thrust of that time. <laughs> And then, it, and then it says, uh, back to the left, it says left off. Yeah, and that's probably a note to myself to try to get back to of a, a, a reward loop mechanism. And it's parallel to our relationship. What kinds of rewards could come back to him that can be healthy? What kinds of rewards that can come from the relationship that can be healthy? And then uh, talking about uh, biology changes. Uh, so I made a note to myself there to uh, talk about how the brain changes in the face of uh, many of these drugs over time. Did you talk with Mr. Depp at all um, that his brain can change as he continues to take these medications, these drugs? Uh, yes, I did. And then it says 10, 27, 14. More on relationship issues, being accused, in his word, of being manic. Grounded by seeing children. Son is one of the positive aspects of the relationship. I assume he's talking about his past relationship there. Mr. Depp was saying that Amber reminded him of his 
mom and his psychotic sister. The relationship reminded him of his relationship with his psychotic sister and his mother. Yes. And and Mr. Depp talked about that he was being accused of being manic. Yes. Did he say who accused him of being manic? I assume from this it was Amber. Turn to the next page, Blaustein 16. Yeah, and it just is uh, 1029, 14 at the top. Mm -hmm. Mood euthymic. What does that mean? Attention. Uh, normal mood. Attention decreased. Um, you mean by attention decreased? Difficulty with attention. Paying attention. Memory uh, uh, transitional difficulties. What do you mean by having transitional difficulties with this memory? Uh, it would have been part of a uh, maybe mental status test that I would have done in the first session uh, where he uh, would have trouble uh, holding on to memory of things from five minutes ago. If I asked him for, to remember three words, he may have had difficulty we would have had difficulty remembering those three words five minutes later after distracting him without the conversation. All right. And then what does it say after that? Uh, THC, a marijuana, as part of issue, tetrahydrocannabinol. That's what THC stands for. So you, you saw THC as an issue with Mr. Depp's memory and attention, is that right? Well, with the transitional memory, at least, yes, perhaps the attention. Uh, MSE, mental status examination, uh, more present, more attention. Uh, off on dates, uh, ask, when I could ask him about uh, what today might be, or what today's date was, perhaps, is what that's referring to. So Mr. Depp was off on on. Oh, that date that was. Okay. Turn it to the next page, uh, Blaustein 17. Uh, it says JD at the top and then 11, 10, 14. See that? Yep, I have that. Okay. Um, and Mr. Depp came in to see you on 11, 10, 14? Correct. Okay. Um, and what's the first line say? Some clouding, probably secondary to THC. What do you mean by clouding? Uh, would have been something in uh, confusion or something about his mental state or less, less sharp, less alert, perhaps. What's the next line say? Uh, it says no evidence of uh, mania, hypomania. What do you mean by that? that? I didn't see in his presentation any evidence of mania or hypomania. Okay. Which would help Johnny's side, right? Um, but this has been like six years or more since he wrote those notes and he had those meetings with Johnny Depp. So I'm actually, I'm actually shocked that they allowed him to read these notes that it's just like bits and pieces of what Johnny discussed. And he's kind of assuming he, you know, what Johnny meant or what Johnny was talking about. Um, I'm actually shocked that they're allowing this. Uh, what's the law about patient confidentiality here in this case? I, I don't even know. Uh, all the therapists, doctors, everyone's been uh, subpoenaed to testify. I mean, they've had Johnny's doctors, like all of them, the nurses, the doctor, everyone. So I don't think, um, I don't, patient confidentiality is not even a thing when it comes to this trial because they've been subpoenaed and they have to go into full details, basically the medicine that he was on, what he was on the medication for, how much he was given. Johnny agreed for all his medical records to be submitted. He must have, he, he would have had to, I'm assuming. 
Yeah, there's no way he remembers because it's only he he just jotted things down. He didn't write the whole thing in. He just jotted things down. I think Johnny was pushed like everybody else that had a relationship with Johnny, like a real relationship with Johnny said that he was not violent. He was not crazy in any way. I think being with Amber, I think she really pushed him, pushed him. But rather than taking any violence out on her, I think he would, you know, slam cabinets around and maybe yell and curse. But I don't think he ever got violent with her. And she would really push and prod at him. Like the day that he found out he had lost, you know, millions of dollars, like over $600 million. He comes home from this meeting. He's frustrated. And she's like, what is it? What's wrong? And she's got a camera set up recording him. And he's irritated. You know, he's in his house, irritated. And she's like, nothing happened. Nothing happened. And he's like, nothing happened to you. You know, um, hey, Crystal. Yeah, I think she really pushed him. Even the doctor said earlier that he felt like um, Johnny Johnny's drug use increased due to um, anxiety, anxiety that he was going, um, the anxiety that he was going through. Let's continue. Next one. Uh, discussion about relationships, core issues of trust. Right, Lindsay. Amber says context. Contact. I mean, in your own house, I've been guilty and I got the patience. I mean, even my friends are like, you're patient. That's one of the things that Sean has talked, you know, like, geez, you're so patient. I'm, I got six kids. I'm really patient. But there's times where I, I might sling something. And if $650 million, had, if I had found out that $650 million had been stolen from me, I probably, what I got in my home, I probably would have flipped out as well. I probably would have lost my mind. $650 million. I mean, that's like almost his entire that's like everything he had almost that he, I don't know how much he had, but the hell that's a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, he went home and he was in the comfort of his home frustrated that all of his money basically had been stolen from him. Um, so, you know, it's not right to slam things around. I, I'm not perfect. And yeah, he worked hard. He started working at, you know, at, at a pretty young age, trying to make something of himself. He, first, it was, uh, you know, obviously music was what he wanted, but uh, he got picked up in acting. So he said he dedicated himself to that. Um. So, I, yeah, we're all human, and uh, I would definitely slam my cabinets around. He was in his home, you know, and his wife, rather than she knew what was going on, she knew that there was a possibility that money was being stolen and that he was at that meeting rather than trying to comfort him. She was recording him, you know? So I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it's not okay to slam things. It's not, you know, um, but he was in his house. People can be upset. Just walk out of the room. I think Amber should have walked out of the room. He was in his house and his mom had just died as well. That's right. His mom had just died. And then he finds out all his money had basically been stolen out of him uh, from me. He was in, he went to his kitchen to pour him, you know, a drink because also he was in, in the middle of addiction, you know, during that time as well. And he was getting a wine glass out. And when he went to open uh, the cabinet, I guess maybe he couldn't get it at first. So when he grabbed it, he slammed it, you know, um, he was in his house. It wasn't like he was, um, out acting crazy, you know, in front of a bunch of people. He was in his home. Um, so I guess he could have walked out of the room, but he needed to be in that room to get a wine class to pour himself um, some wine, you know. Um, so I I think if anybody should have walked away, it should have been Amber. Uh, Amber should have walked away and she should have let him have his moment, you know. Um, I would still be mad. I'd probably still be slamming cabinets if that was my money, you know what I'm saying? Like, my goodness. Mega okay. uh, Fruitless meeting with her therapist. 
Did you ever observe Mr. Depp with mania or hypomania in any of your other sessions? Not that I recall. At 102414, Mr. Depp came in for another individual session, correct? 112414. The first line says 15 minutes late. 15 minutes late, clear, relationship stabilizing, looking at jealous parts of him. What do you mean by that, looking at jealous parts of him? Uh, things that make him jealous of what his role might be in jealousy. And, and, and what made Mr. Depp jealous? Uh, well, about what was happening there, but with Amber, I don't know, I can't recall. I see in my next notice, it was a, it was a triggering point. In my next notice, triggering point, uh, early breakup of 22, where an actress cheated with a leading man. So was, was Mr. Depp jealous of Amber being with other men? I don't remember that specifically. Okay. Turning to Blaski in 18, uh, which looks like it starts at 12, 7, 14. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Depp came in for an individual session. Right. And then it looks like you have paranoia in quotes. Mm -hmm. Would have been his word. And what he meant by that, the elements were fear, envy, and vigilance. So Mr. Depp told you something about paranoia? Mm -hmm. well, as, he defined, as he defined it. And his elements of paranoia were fear, envy, and vigilance, as he told you. Then there's, what, what's the next day, 12, 18, 14? Yeah, let's see. Uh, 12, 18, 14, yes. Um, and Mr. Depp came in for a session. Mm -hmm. Yes. Patient working. So psychotherapy on phone, it's as possible as a phone session that, that, that didn't mark as a phone session. Uh, big fight with girlfriend yesterday. Uh, struggling with how to separate. Let her tell you her feelings. Relationship needs to take care of you. Her to go to a safe zone, withdraw, different than childhood experiences. And then uh, it said 1, 6, uh, 15, correct? Correct. And, and what do these notes say? Patient late, 20 minutes. Uh, positive hypnotherapy session. The goal is to make a beeline to bed. Uh, using a relationship to take care of the individuals. Uh, let's see, not logical approach to Amber's work. Take care of emotions. Uh, sobriety continuing. And then uh, blasting 20, Move down to the last page. And um, this is the 1815, just to be clear. 1815, correct. Slight uh, vulnerability with women in studio who admired Amber. Threat. What did that mean? What did you understand that? Uh, that probably related to your prior question that there was a woman who admired her that he felt jealous of. Let's see, the next thing is. Something of vulnerability. Instance, instances of vulnerability. Um, I, I was reading this. He may have gone to rehab. He actually also went to his island, brought his doctors out to work with him as he went through withdrawals. So, so he could get sober. And from my understanding, he's sober now. From my understanding, he's sober now. I don't know how long he's been sober, but... I, I've read that a couple places that right now he is sober and, you know, keep our fingers crossed because I want, I don't want anybody to be battling addiction. Um, no. Okay. Um, 
but it's five o'clock somewhere said with a wink about him drinking in the early morning is it something someone who has learned that he has a drinking problem i think it was around noon because I, I remember commenting on there on that when he said that because i said well you know it was noon so technically um noon is the turning point it's no longer morning time but when he said that is it was because they were bringing up the fact that it was too early for him, him to have a drink at that point he was still you know in the middle of his addiction drinking so i think he tried to make light of the situation and also like he was bringing it back to then like well back then it was five o'clock somewhere so i was always drinking i don't think he was saying that as like now you know um he was just saying like back then i always considered it five o'clock somewhere and i just drank when i wanted to because i was in the middle of an addiction and i just drank all the time yeah um him saying that i, I mean he's tried to make light of, of, of this situation a lot by staying and that you know that is some people that's how some people deal with with stress and situations that's hard for them they deal with it by humor um my sister is the same way when things get um hard my sister you know lost her son and the way that she deals with that is you know she she tells jokes and stuff and you know she's just humorous um you know um but while on the stand he even he admitted uh he admitted that he, that he had an addiction he he admitted several things so I, I've watched almost every day of this trial and I, while on the stand, I heard him say several things that he did wrong. Um, so I, I'm unsure. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But yeah, um, this trial, he is suing Amber for defamation. Um, so he can't be found guilty. The jury can find Amber guilty or not guilty for uh, defamation. They they will either say yes, we believe that she uh, is guilty of defamation, um, but they can't find him guilty of anything in this one because he's the one that started this lawsuit against her. You know, like when you sue someone, you're suing that person, and you will ask for there to be a jury trial, and the jury will decide if that person is in fact guilty of what you are accusing them of. Um, but yeah, she's been caught lying on the stand. I mean. Um, yeah, let's continue. Yeah, he like doesn't know how to work a microphone. Oh my goodness. Like I noticed um, last night when we was live that um, she forgot to turn it on several times again. And then either Amber or the gentleman over here would turn it off for her. I was like, come on, Elaine, get it together. Vulnerability and internal fear parallel to vulnerability and childhood. inability free or fight only way what does that mean free or fight only way free free or fight or free and fight is the only way and uh my understanding of that is either to be free of the relationship or fight for it and positive um relatedness with amber through um, <laughs> Dash vulnerability. Did um and and one eight fifteen was the last time you um saw or spoke to Mr. Depp as a patient, correct? Uh, I believe that's true. Did Mr. Depp? I guess that's true. Yeah, there's to a you counter suit. How his jealousy would present itself, whether it's jealous of a man or a woman in relation to Amber. Working. It would make him angry. It would make him feel insecure. Sorry, guys. I keep. I don't know what's going on. Um. Your next witness. Your Honor, our next witness is Eric George. He was the attorney for. She is counter suing. I forgot about that. So I guess if in the counter suit, what was she counter suing for? I don't remember. Um, anyways, I was trying to respond to someone.
I haven't watched his daughter, but I would like to watch just to see. But his daughter's not in any big films. I think she's done a couple independent films, right? Yeah. Um, the money paper bill. Thank you, Joe. Um, oh, this is what I was going to respond to. Jelly Bean. She is listed as a potential witness. So from my, from what I'm seeing, she will, in fact, testify, which I'm praying that she will because she's really going to be a good one if they call in Jennifer Howe. I definitely think they need to. And I think they will. I think that's why they asked. I think that's why they asked Whitney about Jennifer Howe. It is live tour, Matthews. We are live. I'm um, Central Time, so it's 1021 here. Amber, relating to the op-ed. Will you please take All right. Your name for the record? Sure. Eric George, E-R-I-C. Last name is George, G-E-O-R-G-E. -E. And could you also state your business address, please? Sure. 2121 Avenue of the Stars, Suite 2800, Los Angeles, California, 90067. And what is the name of the law firm that you work with? It's Brown, B-R-O-W-N-E, George, Ross, O'Brien, Anagway, and Ellis. And you are an attorney, Mr. George? I am. I am. And I take it from the name of the firm that you are one of the named partners? I am indeed. Okay. Uh, what are your areas of practice? Litigation, uh, largely in the business and entertainment areas. Have you handled defamation and libel matters? I have. Where are you barred? In other words, where? what states are you a member of the bar? Sure. In California, New York, and Washington, D.C. And are you also a member or barred in the United States Supreme Court? I am. Can you please tell us where you attended undergraduate and law school? Sure. In Georgetown for both undergrad and law school. What, if any, service did you have with the Council of the United States Senate Judiciary Committee? Sure. Um, in, I'm just pausing to get my dates correct here. Um, in approximately March of 1999, I began service as counsel to the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee, where I served through uh, uh, mid-2000. And what, if any, service did you have to the secretary, uh, the legal affairs secretary to the governor, Pete Wilson? Sure. Uh, from about March 1997 to January of 1999, I was counsel to then Governor Pete Wilson, and my specific title was Deputy Legal Affairs Secretary. Have you been recognized for your career achievements since you have been an attorney? Uh, I'll say immodestly, yes, in uh, various ways that uh, lawyers are from time to time in magazines and publications and whatnot. And what, if any, uh, uh, recognition have you received as one of the top 100 attorneys uh, in California? The legal paper annually puts out a list of the top 100 attorneys in California, and I've been fortunate to be selected as one of those uh, for many years. And what, if any, recognition have you had as being a super lawyer in California? Uh, same answer, except that's, I believe it's called Los Angeles Lawyer Magazine. I, I could have that wrong, but again, annually they put out a list of their super lawyers. All right. And are you also a member of the American College of Trial Lawyers? 
I, I just want to say something really quick. Um, DV by three women, your brother, brother really needs to start choosing a different type. I don't think you can really tell. There is literally like a narcissist, literally out in the open. People love them because they, they put on a mask of who they um, think they should be in front of uh, certain people. It's not a, a mat. You know, abusers aren't out there saying, hey, I beat women. Hey, I beat men. Come date me. And you go, oh, sure. Yeah, I'll give you a try. You know what I'm saying? Um, her um, brother probably met a woman and had no idea. Um, and who knows how old her brother is? Her, her brother could be in his 40s and 50s and, you know, dated throughout time. And out of the, you know, five or six women that he dated, three of them was abusive to him. Um, we don't know. You, you just don't know. You know what I'm saying? When you start dating someone, especially people that tend to, to be abusive, a lot of them will have mental health issues that, you know, cause them to be a certain way. And um, a lot of those people pretend to be, yeah, they're fake at first. They, they pretend to be these great people. And so I just don't think it's a fair statement. You know, um, I mean, I, I know people really close to, to me that were in uh, domestic violence situations uh, with their partner. And when they got with their partner, you would have never guessed, you know, you would have never guessed um, that, that their partner was abusive, you know. Right. You think that they're amazing because that's what they put out there. Right. I am. What, what is one of the, what is the, one of the qualifications for becoming a member being invited to be a fellow of the American College of Trial Lawyers? Sure. So the, the college reaches out to individual lawyers who distinguish themselves and generally occupy the top 1% of law practice. And it's an organization dedicated to the development of professionalism within the practice of law. I'm going to now turn to Amber Heard, and I'm going to ask you, Mr. Joyce, how long have you known Amber Heard? Um, I have known Amber Heard, gosh, it's got to be a good five years I'm going to be referring to an op-ed, and I'm going to use the term op-ed. It, it's obviously an opinion editorial uh, that uh, Amber Heard uh, ended up uh, ultimately publishing with the ACLU. And so in the Washington Post, in December 18, 2018. Um, so as I go through and ask these questions, I'm going to be using just the term op-ed. Will you be comfortable with me using op-ed and understand it to mean that particular publication on sure. December 18, 2018? Sure. So what, if any, legal representation did you provide to Ms. Heard relating to the op-ed? She presented to me a draft of the op-ed and asked for my counsel in terms of reviewing it, uh, editing it and finalizing it for publication. When is the first time Amber Heard reached out to you in connection with the op-ed and reviewing the op-ed? It was certainly within the time frame of December 6, 2018. In connection with the op-ed, what, if anything, was your objective in representing Amber Heard with respect to the review and revision of the op-ed? I reviewed it and spent some significant time on it to make sure that there would be no meritorious claim that could be brought against her in connection with a defamation or related type of tort claim. And ideally with that in mind, to minimize the possibility of her ever being sued in connection with publishing it. So, Mr. George, I'm going to ask you to take a look at exhibit number nine. Yes. Are you familiar with this document? I am. Please describe what it is. Um, as its title, it's a judgment of dissolution of the marriage between Amber Heard and Mr. Depp. 
Were you familiar with this document and its contents when you represented Amber Heard relating to the review of the op-ed? Yes. And what was your objective in representing and advising Amber Heard on the op-ed in connection with this stipulated judgment of dissolution of marriage? So uh, my objective was to make sure that there would be no meritorious claim that could be brought against Ms. Heard in connection with the publication of an op-ed whether that is a tort related to, say, defamation or something uh, akin to it, uh, but also including any contract-based breach claim uh, arising in connection with the judgment. And what if any, uh, uh, what if any indications did you have from Amber Heard during that time frame that Amber did not intend to follow your advice or did not care if she was in a compromising position or might be at legal risk? So let me answer that this way. Uh, really two points. Number one, uh, there was never anything that she said to me to the effect that uh, she was willing to run some risk of being sued or that she wouldn't listen to my counsel or anything of that sort. Uh, number two, that uh, she affirmatively did follow in all instances my counsel with respect to these particular edits. What, if any, legal advice provided by you to Amber Heard respecting the Washington Post op-ed was disregarded by Amber Heard? None, to my knowledge. What, if any, legal advice provided by you to Amber Heard respecting the Washington Post op-ed was followed by Amber, Amber Heard? All of it. What, if any, legal advice did you provide to Amber Heard in connection with the drafting and publication of the op-ed that was not made in good faith by you? I, I acted in good faith throughout and with the best of my abilities. All right, your next witness. Yes, Your Honor, we have Jessica Kovacevic. She's uh, Amber's agent, and that's approximately 27 minutes. Hey, okay, honey time? badger. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, because really, okay. So, first off, Amber Heard had pictures of Johnny Depp. Growing up in her room, she had posters of him, right? Then when they started talking she claimed that uh she had never seen any of his films or something like that that oh she knew who he was but she wasn't a fan but literally her sister said growing up that amber had posters of johnny depp of him on their walls and that she had even made comments about marrying him one day okay so they start dating she does drugs and drinks as well she's pushing people downstairs She's, you know, fighting. You hear audio of the doctor saying she's being combative. I'm not, I don't think that Johnny Depp is um, perfect. And I think he definitely made mistakes. I definitely think he acted in ways that he shouldn't have. I definitely think he, he, he made a lot of mistakes. The main one was getting with Amber Heard to begin with. But Amber Heard is definitely, um, she's got issues. I mean, she got with this man. Um, and she was fine with him doing drugs. She acts like she wasn't, but that's why on their wedding invitations, it said drugs, like they're going to have drugs at the wedding. You know, uh, she, th they had mushrooms, they had weed. Um, yeah, she was literally going to toss her own, like she almost pushed her own sister down the stairs because her sister tried to get in between. So a Amber was going for Johnny Depp. Amber was going for him. And the sister ran and got in between them. And so she pushed the sister down the stairs or she attempted to, or, uh, everybody has testified to, uh, everybody has basically testified that she was the, the aggressor. All the, the, the stories that she's told has changed several times, several times. I mean, her story has literally changed. Um, who was it that swoop swoop with the blue hair? She has a YouTube channel. She's went over all of it. And, 
she's like, so Amber's story has changed five times so far. Even Amber's story from the deposition to in trial has changed in regards to Whitney, in regards to Australia, in regards to everything. Like it's changed. Like in all at the deposition, she said, I thought he was going to hit my sister. It looked like he was going to push my sister down the stairs. So I hit him. Um, but then in trial, she says he did hit my sister. Um, but the sister went to live with a, her boss when all that happened. The sister was living um, in the penthouses. Amber literally had her sister living in the penthouses, her friends living in the penthouses. I mean, Johnny Depp owned five penthouses, five. And he lived in one. And all the other ones were taken over. Like, well, he did, uh, one of his good friends lived in one, which was the painter. Um, what was his name? Isaac Baruch. Um, this attorney's testimony basically says he should be sued for malpractice because he gave Amber such bad advice and she followed it to the letter. So Isaac Baruch, he gave Isaac an apart at one of the penthouses, but all the other penthouses were taken over by like uh, Whitney, Rocky Pennington, you know, friends. Um, he would literally bring all her friends to the island. He would bring her family to the island, um, gifted them with, with all kind of things. Um, but when Whitney was when that fight took place and Whitney tried to tried to get in between them to keep Amber from hitting Johnny. Uh, Amber got physical with Whitney. So Whitney left and she went to her boss's house. Her boss was Jennifer Howe at the time. They literally considered themselves uh, right victims. Yeah. Abusers 101. They separate they separate their spouse from uh, their family and friends they separate them. Yeah. This is a YouTube channel. So everything's is my opinion. Yeah. Um, so, um, you talk too much. I break. See you, Dean. A YouTube channel channel is about talking. That's what I do here. We listen. I talk. That's what it is. Um, I think we got 254 people in here. You guys make sure you go like the channel. Um, when Dean drops, it'll be 250. 3252 but that's what i do here you guys yes we watch and then i get my opinion but we have literally everybody's talking on the chat so i'm gonna stop I'm, I'm gonna stop and and talk about what you guys are talking about rather than trying to talk over it um i, I don't think he owns a chocolate factory but who knows you know um right it, how can you push someone down the stairs if you're behind them right that doesn't even make sense you know so anyways Whitney left the penthouse that she was living in and moved in with her boss, Jennifer Holloway. Is that, is that her last name? Jennifer Howe, Jennifer Howe. And when she, she was working for Jennifer and she had already told Jennifer that she was scared of her sister, that Amber was abusive, that she didn't know why uh, Johnny stayed with Amber. And when she went to Jennifer's house that night, she said that uh, she told Jennifer that Amber tried to push her down the stairs because she tried to get in between Amber and Johnny because Amber was about to push Johnny down the stairs. So she got in between them and Amber pushed her. So she was done. She left. She moved in with Jennifer, lived with Jennifer a little bit. Um, and she was at work when she got the call that Amber had cut Johnny's finger. She was literally at work. They have employees. Uh, the boss was there when she got the phone call, when uh, Wendy got the phone call and said, when she hung up, she goes, oh my God, Amber's done it now. She cut off his effing finger. There's so much, there's so much proof that Amber absolutely, you know, she even says that she hit him or she goes, I hit you. It wasn't a punch. There's audio of her calling him a coward because he wants to walk away. There's audio of him saying it can never get physical. It can never get physical. It can never get physical. And she goes, I can't promise I won't get physical. You know, um, I think he really loved her and I think he wanted it to work. I think it was, a struggle for him because she did get physical and he had never dealt with anything like that as far as you know Johnny's a rock and roller I mean look at the rings he hangs out with Marilyn Manson he's not your he, he's not your church going oh my god you know type of guy no he he uses 
He's got a foul mouth. He uses curse words and he parties hard. And even Elaine, like to hear her story, her and Johnny was like messing around, you know, um, and then he just quit. He just quit talking to her. And it seemed like she was like a disgruntled ex almost, you know, even though he threw this bottle that day, that, that night when they were at this get together or whatever, she actually went back and said uh, that he tossed it. She's like, oh, a light toss, you know, even though he, he tossed that bottle. She didn't leave him. She wasn't like, oh, my gosh, you're so violent. I don't want nothing to do with you. She didn't. She she said their relationship ended because he just quit contacting her, you know, so. If he got so wasted to pass out at the end, how did he abuse her alone at night? Yeah. Exactly. I think I think it's been proven that Amber lied. I mean, I, I don't even understand. Good night, Teresa. Um, and she was abusive to her ex um, in a in a freaking airport. She got abusive with the ex in an airport, you know. So I don't think Johnny's perfect i think he curses i think he has some very dark humor um he threw biggie at crowd of people okay let's go ahead and let's continue but you guys if you are just here to just watch this i will stop it he threw a bottle at a crowd of people i, I thought she said there that he wasn't throwing the bottle necessarily at the crowd of people but he and I thought she said he tossed it. Um, I don't doubt that he has a temper. I feel like he probably does. Um, I'm a patient person, but there's been times that my temper has gotten the best of me. It hasn't happened, you know, a whole, whole, whole lot, but there's been times. Um, I don't think Johnny is perfect, but when it comes to this situation with everything that Amber do has done, I think it's overwhelming, you know. I think there's so much that she has done and she was perfectly okay with ruining his career, his life, you know, embarrassing his children. I mean, Johnny said that, you know, one of his children was at school and someone brought people magazine with the picture of Amber with the bruise and was like, this is what your dad did. You know, I, she was completely okay with ruining his life. So I think he had every right to defend himself, despite the fact that he's not perfect, despite the fact that he knew all this was going to come out about him. He knew that they were going to dig and dig and dig and find any and everyone that ever had an issue with him. And they were going to, you know, bring them to testify on their behalf. He knew this was going to happen. He knew every piece of dirt they could find. They were going to use it against him, but he did it anyways because he refused to sit silent and allow her to lie on him. She even said he was detoxing and slapped her and then was wanting to force her sexual acts. People that are detoxing do not want to, exactly, I know, right? Like, there's no way. The, the way he explained it, he, what did he say? He had the, the um, chills, uh, I mean, I have family members that there's no way you see somebody detoxing. They're not going to be trying to get it in. You know what I'm saying? All right, Definitely. let's continue. K-O-V-A-C-E-V-I-C. -E -C. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon, Ms. Kovacevic. And Ms. Kovacevic, do you know that you are um, here today uh, in your personal capacity and also as a representative Thank of you, your agency, Thank you, WME? I do. Ms. Kovacevic, uh, what do you do for work? I'm a talent agent. Would you please describe in just very general terms what a talent agent does generally? Generally, you procure work um, for your clients. You um, make introductions, you read their scripts, you negotiate their deals. And I take it Ms. Hurd is one of your clients? Yes. Did Ms. Hurd have a successful career at the time you began working with her? Yes. And over the period uh, that you've worked uh, for, with Ms. Hurd as her agent, what have your job responsibilities entailed? 
um, like I mentioned before, introducing her to producers and directors, writers, um, studio executives, um, procuring work for her, uh, introducing her, just introducing her to people that can employ her, and then negotiating her deals, and then dealing with whatever happens on uh, while she is working, anything that arises that needs dealing with. Did you ever, at any point in time, see Mr. Depp hit Miss Heard? No. Were you working with Miss Heard when she was cast in the original Aquaman? She was cast in, I was, she was cast in Justice League first, and then the deal was to be in Justice League, the first Aquaman and the second Aquaman. Did you assist Miss Heard in procuring the role of Mira in Aquaman? Yes. Was Aquaman a successful movie? Extremely. Was Miss Heard's performance in the film well received critically? Yes. Were there any negative views about Miss Heard's performance in Aquaman? In the press, you mean? Or what do you mean specifically? Well, in the press or otherwise? No, there weren't any negative. As her talent agent, did you attempt to renegotiate Miss Heard's salary for Aquaman 2? Yes. Uh, when did you do that? We did that uh, around this time last year. Why did you attempt to renegotiate it at all? It's standard to uh, renegotiate uh, these types of deals. Uh, it's normal practice. Um, when a movie, I mean, when Aquaman came out, it was the most successful movie of all time ever. Um, so even more so for that reason, but for any successful franchise movie, when you make um, a three or four picture deal like we did um, in success, uh, it's typical to go back and renegotiate the deal. And now getting to your point, why did you choose to do it last year at this time? Um, because that's when her option was exercised. And when you did get around to trying to negotiate, um, you and WME successful in doing that? Correct. Uh, when did he call Warner Brothers to renegotiate uh, the next film? It would have been the end of February last year. What year is that? 2021? Yes. At some point, was there were there press reports that Ms. Heard was getting released from Aquaman 2? There were uh, online rumors for a while that she was being replaced. When did you first hear about this? Um, first, I don't know exactly when, but it, it was way before for it was it was way before this. It was maybe even a year before this. Thank you, Crystal. Six months before, maybe. So nobody ever told you that Warner Brothers misrepresented the reason that they were replacing Ms. Heard, correct? Why? No, why would they? Did there come a time when Ms. Heard was restored to her role in Aquaman 2? Yes. At that time, uh, what were the terms of her restoration to Aquaman 2? The financial terms? Yes. Uh, she was going to be making $2 million on the, on the second film. Was that consistent with the original contract? Yes. Is this consistent with what uh, Warner Brothers originally gave as the rationale for not using her in Aquaman 2? The, the lack of chemistry between her and Jason? Yes. Yes. So um, did there come a time when WME came to understand that uh, Ms. Heard's role as Mira in, in Aquaman 2 was diminished in some way? Hold up. So this debunks her countersuit, right? She's countersuing, claiming that she... Wait, tell me why she's countersuing again, because my mind is going blank. Uh, she is she countersuing for he's suing her for a hundred million, right? And she's countersuing for fifty million, claiming 
um, claiming that he is the reason that she's losing her roles as well, right? Right, Sabrina? So this just debunks, if that's why she's countersuing, if that's why she's countersuing, you know, uh, claiming that she lost roles due to Johnny, he's asking for 50 million and she's asking for 100 million. Okay, I got it backwards. Um, I thought he was it. I, I had it backwards. You guys, my brain's not working today. Um, so her talent agent just said the reason she may not get the role or her role was reduced because of the chemistry between her and Jason, not because of Johnny. So when she was sent the script, uh, she was sent the script directly which is the common practice for these films. You're aware that Ms. Heard has a contract with L'Oreal, correct? Yes. Uh, were you working with Ms. Heard when she signed that contract? Yes. What's it bought? Uh, the bought is a, a fake account that's created to execute a certain objective. What? Um, what is your educational background since high school? College. Uh, what college did you attend? NYU. What year did you graduate? 2005. What was your major? Communications. When WME first began working with Ms. Hurd as her talent agent, uh, you said she had had some success. How well known was Ms. Hurd? Um, she was pretty famous. Um, she was within the industry. You could call anyone and they knew who she was. Um, so she had a, a certain level of, of fame. She because she was married to Johnny Depp. Movies and shows already by that point. But going back and taking a wider lens, you know, over the time that you've, the several years you've worked for with Miss Heard, how would you characterize the arc of her career? Um, I would say she was a known actress when I started working with her. Um, I said she was someone that you could call executives and producers and people about everyone you know knew her name. Um, she hadn't yet like reached um, big star status, but she was definitely um, you know she, she could get the lead of an independent movie, she could get the lead of a TV series. Um, when I worked with her, we, we st slowly started to like strategically, you know, have her work on some more prestigious projects and work with, you know, uh, better directors. And then when she got Justice League, that was a, you know, turning point for her. Um, and then Aquaman, you know, subsequently, um, was obviously the you know the biggest thing she had ever been a part of. And is, is the arc of her career now on the upswing with her being part of Aquaman too? No. Tell me what you mean. Why not? Um, because typically. Um, when you have an actor who is in a movie as successful as that, as Aquaman was, um, their career um, totally changes and they're in a different echelon. They, you know, get way more offers. They're just put in a different place um, position wise with studios. Um, they're more bankable so they can green light projects. Um, all of those kind of things are consistent with when you're in a, a blockbuster of that size. And um, with her, uh, that did not happen. Um, you know, it happened, you know, very significantly for her co-star. Obviously, he's the lead of the film and he's a title character. But um, even, you know, even a small percentage of that did not happen for her. Um, so uh, that's. That's my assessment. 
What evidence sitting here uh, today do you have that this caused her career any harm? Um, because, the, I mean, evidence in that, in my experience and the experience of my colleagues and in, in, in the experience of this business, um, you your career takes a turn after something like that. You're, she was very well received in the movie at the time. Everyone was very happy with her at the time. There was no issues. And then to have a complete downturn after that and then have that coincide with constant tweets and negativity put out about her. Um, I don't have a physical piece of paper of evidence, but it's the only logical conclusion I can draw. Can you name a single role she has lost as a result of any activity by Adam Waldman or anyone at his behest? Um, there was a movie at Amazon that she had been offered um, with Gael Garcia Bernal. I don't know what the, the final um, title of it is called now. I can look it up. Um, it had a working title at the time. Um, that they um, took away from her and, um, you know, the lead actor who was a producer on it very much wanted it to be her and was very frustrated with the process. And no one, no one can say, um, out loud, we're taking this away from her because, you know, of this bad press, because it's nothing she did and it's, it's all hearsay and it's all, you know, whatever, but there's no other reason. Now, Ms. Kovacevic, you, You've testified a bit about Adam Waldman, correct? Correct. And can you point us to any career opportunities that Ms. Heard has lost because of any statements made by Mr. Waldman? I mean, the, that, the Amazon movie, for one, is one that I, is tangible because that is an example of something that she had before all of it that was then um, taken away. Um, I know that um, a campaign she shot for Todd's via Katie Slater um, was scrapped and not used. Um, uh, I don't. I, there was not another specific example because, like I said to you, no one is going to say to me, "Oh, we can't hire her because of these tweets or whatever." They just don't want to hire someone that has bad press around them from you know, these accusations calling, no one wants someone who's being accused of a liar and making something up and, you know, abusing somebody. No one wants that association with their project. Of course. And directing your attention 10 pages into the article, there's a, another quote from Ms. I think that talent, uh, that talent lady just proved Johnny Depp's case too, because she said nobody wants an actor that's associated with XYZ, you know? And uh, Johnny Depp's attorney said something to him, which probably what he said was exactly, this is what Amber did to you. Nobody's gonna want you because of what she did to you. I'm gonna back it up just a little bit. So these tweets or whatever, they just don't want to hire someone that has Watch here. bad press around them from, you know, these accusations calling, no one wants someone who's being accused of a liar and making something up and, you know, abusing somebody. No one exactly. wants that association with their project. Exactly. And directing your attention 10 pages into the article, there's a, another quote from Mr. Waldman. Mr. Waldman states in this article, quote, quite simply, this was an ambush, a hoax. They set Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempt didn't do the trick. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine and roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, and then placed a second call to 911, end quote. Did I read that correctly? It just shows the top part of that on this page, but the top part was was correct. Okay. Did any uh, potential did, was WME aware of Adam's statement, Mr. Waldman's statements in this particular article? Yes. Now you testified a little bit earlier about there being tweets from Adam. I assume you were talking you were referring to Adam Waldman. Is that correct? 
Definitely. And, and what, if any, impact did it have on Amber Heard's career and career path to have Mr. Depp's lawyer putting out statements in the press and in tweets that Amber Heard was lying, making things up, creating a hoax of abuse. I think that his comments spurred on, uh, it just added fuel to the fire. So there was already so much media coverage. And that's what you observed? That's what I observed. I'm gonna take you to Aquaman and I'll call it Aquaman one just to make it a little bit easier to understand. What if any performance issues were raised with Amber Heard by anyone uh, that was responsible for the filming of Aquaman? No performance issues raised whatsoever. And what was your understanding of how Amber tested with the audiences in Aquaman? My understanding was that she tested extremely well. And, and this is an Aquaman has reflected all the markers of a very successful movie at this point. Yes. You testified earlier that it's quite typical when you have a series of three to four uh, films in a, in a franchise or a series uh, to be able to renegotiate as you go into the sequels. Do you recall that testimony? Yes. Okay. And why is that? Um, because you make the initial deals um, you know, uh, before the movie has done, you know, well. Um, and then when the movie overperforms like that, it's just, it's a custom. In light of the success of Aquaman, uh, would you expect that Amber Heard would be receiving endorsements as of this time? Yes. And, and what is the typical, uh, what is the typical process that happens after someone has starred in a very successful movie such as Aquaman and Amber with Mira. The endorsement department would, um, a combination of offers and then um, seeking out offers, that uh, seeking out opportunities. Now, given Amber's career trajectory leading up to and immediately after the success of Aquaman 1, did you expect her career to go on an upward, downward trajectory or stay the same? I expected an upward trajectory. And why is that? Because in success of a film like that, it's, it's usually always the case. And immediately after the successes of Aquaman, would you have expected Amber's annual earnings to increase, decrease, or stay the same compared to the previous five years? I would have expected them to increase. And why is that? Because her um, her profile had been raised internationally. She was in a movie that was successful worldwide. And when you are in a movie that performs that well worldwide, your bankability is, is stronger. Um, you can finance an independent film more easily. You can uh, green light a film more easily. Um, you can just do more and for more money. Do you recall what the budget was for Aquaman? The first one? Um, I don't know. It would have been probably somewhere between uh, 150 and 200 million. Immediately after the su success of Aquaman, would you have expected Ms. Heard to continue to earn at least the fee she made on Aquaman on future big budget studio firms or less or more? You, um, that becomes an actor's quote, um, their fee. Um, and uh, yes, typically, like you will then earn your, not on a tiny independent film, you you can make that much money on that, but um, another studio film, another film at a streamer or whatever, something like that, you would make that much or potentially get a raise. Other than Aquaman 2, has Amber obtained any roles with a budget the size of Aquaman's? No. Has she been hired for any films with budgets over 100 million? No. Immediately after the success of Aquaman, would you expect the success of Aquaman and her starring role in that film to increase her ability to get more movie studios uh, to be interested in her? Decrease or stay the same? Increase. 
And did it? No. Would you expect her uh, to get more TV roles? Objection. Yeah. And why? Why? Um, because um, I mentioned earlier um, in the conversation, um, you know, TV and, and films are so blended now and there's much less of a delineation between picking projects between film and TV. And did Amber receive more TV roles as a result of Aquaman, the success of Aquaman? No. Immediately after the success of Aquaman, would you have expected Amber to start in more than one project per year, less, or the same? It depends. If it was a big, you know, Aquaman takes up six months of the year. Big movies take up longer time. Indies, you can do a couple of them a year. It just depends. So I wouldn't put a number on it, but definitely um, more than zero. And has Amber started more than one project per year since then? No. Immediately after the success of Aquaman, did you expect Amber to earn between five and $10 million a year for the next five years? I would have expected to renegotiate on Aquaman 2, most certainly. Um, and so right there, um, that would have been significantly more. And um, she would have, yes, I would have expected her to earn more in a combination of TV, film, and more endorsements. Was it your understanding that WME passed on to L'Oreal suggestions to assist them in being able to block some of the harassing uh, Instagrams they were getting at that time? Yes. All right. Let's bring up 30 again, please. Now, did in fact L'Oreal suspend having Amber Heard on the International Women's Day campaign? Yes. What the conditions were for for the for the renewal? Um, it was just essentially that they were renewing her. Um, uh, I it was the same fee. Um, that was the, the the bulk of it. It wasn't you know like an, a raise, um, but they were extending her. Okay. And typically, coming out of the success of Aquaman, would you have anticipated that Amber could have? negotiated larger fees for commercial projects? Yes, we would. Okay, and why would that be? Because her profile had been raised, she was, you know, um, she had done something super successful, so in typically that's what you would do. That would just be the standard practice. When did you first learn about the change.org petition that was out there to try to get Amber Heard dropped from Aquaman 2. I don't know when I first saw it. Uh, were you aware of it as of May 27, 2020? Yes. You earlier uh, talked about bots in response to one of Mr. Chu's uh, um, questions. What, if anything, was your understanding of these bots at this time, during this time frame? My understanding is just based off my own um, mainly based off my own research, just clicking on the, the accounts myself um, and then discussing it amongst the team. And, and what did you learn when you did that? Just as I would go through, you know, daily, just looking at comments or, uh, you know, just the negative comments. Clicking on them, many of them were just kind of accounts made for this kind of commentary or just accounts that just had, you know, no followers, no, no posts, nothing, um, or following just Amber and Johnny, things like that. And, and I'm sorry. And so what did you learn from clicking onto those that led you to believe they were bots? They, they weren't consistent with, uh, what I know to be uh, actual Instagram accounts. When you look to set a career trajectory for an actor who just broke out in a major franchise film, would you look to other comparable actors' careers to ascertain what type of acting jobs they could get? I, I, I mean, I've been doing this job for, you know, um, quite some time, so I, I don't necessarily look to one or the other, but in general, 
when someone is in, you know, what was at the time the most successful film ever released, um, the natural progression is growth and more films, more, you know, more work, more money, all of that stuff. And when you say the most successful film ever, you're referring to Aquaman 1, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, are comparable actor salaries used in your mind to ascertain the asking price for an actor in a similar film? Are comparable actor salaries used in your mind to ascertain the asking price for an actor in a similar film? Yes. Would you consider Anna de Amas' career to be comparable to Amber's in measuring where Amber would have been after Aquaman 1? Should have been. Anna de Armas, yes. I would say that would be a, a, a comparable, um, that would be a good comp. Okay, I'm looking up to see what's uh, the biggest film ever. Uh, because I noticed you said that, and I, I was watching somebody the other day, and they said no, as far as Disney relate, Disney was related, or it's not the biggest film ever. So I was looking up. So Avatar, from what I'm looking up, Avatar ranks number one. Avengers: Endgame ranks second. Titanic third. Star Wars: The Force Awakens is fourth. Avengers: Infinity War fifth. Spider-Man: No Way Home is sixth. Jurassic Sick World 7, The Lion King 8, The Avengers 9, Furious 7 is 10, Frozen is 11. I might need to update this. Let's see it. Oh, Aquaman is 24. Aquaman is number 24. Not the most successful ever. Aquaman is 24. Captain Marvel is 27. So oh, let me get back on there. I noticed she said that and I was watching someone the other day when she, when she said that and I was like, well, no, 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 that's not right. Okay, let's continue. All right. Yes, ma'am. Is that what you have for today? That's it. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our, our day and the end of our week. Um, so I want to make sure you have a good three days and come back for our last week of testimony, uh, and, uh, enjoy your weekend. I just want to remind you again of, uh, what we need to remember as we go through the weekend. Okay. So you're not to read anything about this case. You're not to watch anything about this case. You're not to listen to anything about the case. This applies to television, newspapers, magazines, the internet, and any online sites. Further, you're not to read, watch, or listen to anything about this case on any social media networking site or streaming service. In addition, you must not communicate with anyone about the case, whether in person, over the phone, by email, text, or instant messaging, or by any other electronic or non-electronic means. This includes your fellow jurors, friends, family, co-workers, acquaintances, and strangers. I also instruct you that you cannot do any research or make inquiries about this case, whether online or by any other means. For example, you cannot look information up on the internet that is related to this case or related to the persons involved in this case, nor may you consult dictionaries or other reference materials. What you learn about this case is limited to what you learn in the four walls of this courtroom when proceedings are underway, all right? So enjoy your weekend. We'll see you early, nine o'clock, ready to go on Monday morning, okay? Thank you. Right. And also, uh, in this matter, Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp, please do not do any posts on social media over the weekend and no public statements, please. All right. Um, and we will see you on Monday morning. As for the attorneys, 8 a.m. tomorrow. I thank you for all the jury instructions, objections, for going through those now. I appreciate that. Um, I am missing some exhibits from depositions that we need to get so we can get with Jamie so we can get those um, in get them all taken care of for the week. Um, another thing that I'm doing just to give you information, um, where I'm getting IT together to do a laptop uh, for the jurors for deliberations. The laptop is gonna be scrubbed and it's just gonna have the audio and the video files on them, okay? So I'm, they're gonna get me a mock-up by Tuesday 
it's just gonna it's not gonna have any Wi-Fi or internet or no password so it's just gonna have that on it so once I get it um, and I approve it I'm gonna have it, both parties take a look at it and make sure everything is on there uh, that's supposed to be on there and that's gonna go to the jury when the physical evidence goes to the jury okay I just seemed like that was a better way to do it for the audio and the video files okay uh, as far as times go I can give you your updated times of the, as of this minute um, for plaintiff, plaintiff has used 42 hours and 45 minutes. Defendant has used 53 hours and one minute. So the time remaining for the plaintiffs is 18 hours and 30 minutes. And the time for the defendants is eight hours and 14 minutes. Okay. So anybody have any other issues before we're done for tonight? All right. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Yes. Thank you, Amy. All right, that's it. Uh, I saw someone's comment a while ago. I, I do not drink. I do not do drugs. I've um, never done drugs. Uh, I, I mean, I drank way years ago, you know, on the occasion, but I, I've never been, a, I've literally drank a handful of times, you know, um, never done drugs. And I support Johnny Depp in this case because his life was ruined Welcome over this. I'm your host, Brian. And she did not care. She didn't care that she was ruining his life. Um, you know, um, and I don't think, I don't think he hit her over the Winona tattoo because I wasn't even a huge fan of Johnny Depp, but I even knew that he had a tattoo, Winona, that he changed to Wino. Like, I even knew that somehow. I don't know how I knew it, but I knew it. Um, maybe... I don't, I don't know how, but I, I was aware of it. And the story that she told about that doesn't really make sense. Um, she says uh, she was sitting on the cow. I don't know. The story has changed. It doesn't make sense. And when you get, I mean, I, thankfully, I've never been hit by a man before, you know. But if I was, I don't think if someone knocked me off their couch onto the floor, I would be looking, thinking, how did I never notice that this carpet was so dirty? I would be thinking, what in the absolute sh just happened? I got to get my ass out of here. That's what I would be thinking. I would not even, the, the dirty carpet would, I mean, maybe if I noticed the dirty carpet, I might would notice it, but it wouldn't even be a thought. Like my eyes might see that the carpet is dirty, but Johnny Depp had cleaners too. And she even testified as far as she knew, the cleaners came every day. You mean to tell me cleaners came every day but somehow the carpet was so dirty it just doesn't make sense to me uh, according to amber yeah that was their first fight according to amber but she didn't have to have the date right she said um i'll never forget it i'll never forget it you never forget the first time someone punches you but then she had the date wrong well i thought you never forget it you know i mean it, um she couldn't even say the forever part because it made her yet yeah, ticked her off too much. You don't taunt and poke and, you know, pick at someone that allegedly uh, it beats you. Uh, no, we have no proof that he hit her. There's no pictures showing anything more than Botox and maybe when she had her nose job. You know what I'm saying? Stories don't match. Her witnesses, um, their stories are all over the place as well. Um the acting coach uh, said, uh, you know, Amber told me that Johnny cut his finger off, cut his finger with a wine bottle. But yet Amber's story is with the phone. You know, Johnny Depp's story is the only one that's been consistent. So I do take Johnny Depp's side when it comes to this. I'm not saying he's perfect. Um, and I'm not a drug user. I'm not an alcoholic. I don't drink. I don't do drugs. I don't even smoke cigarettes. But I do take his side on this. And, you know, just because a man leaves his wife, it doesn't make it doesn't mean that he's deserving of losing his livelihood. Those children probably still depend on him, you know, to some degree. That cost who their relationship. He left her and she begged him back. They, there are even messages out there proving that uh, saying, um, please, please, please take me black back please don't make me turn into someone that I don't want to be don't push it too far um because she wanted him back and he was like nope never again um he tried to get sober several times 
and she refused to give him his medication to help him get sober. She did coke as well, though. I mean, she may have not. She may have not been an addict, but she did coke as well. Amber Heard will try to take try to take the paint color on the wall as evidence. Uh, Johnny Depp hasn't been proven guilty of anything. Oh, no, I definitely believe Harvey Weinstein abused his victims. I do because their stories make sense. Their stories make sense. Multiple women come out to say, yes, he did that to me. When all of Johnny Depp's exes that he really had relationships with when I went on a rider came out to say, that is not the Johnny that I know. I felt perfectly safe. He didn't even raise his voice. He was such a gentleman. Um, his uh, Vanessa, the mother of his children, same thing. There was only one person that came out, and that was Elaine. And she said he tossed, he tossed a bottle, you know? I mean, and she even admitted that the reason their sexual relationship ended was because he quit contacting her. So if he was abusive and she was scared of him and he was slinging bottles at everyone. Why was he the one that ended their relationship? Yeah, most DV victims don't poop on their, yeah. Most DV victims do not poop on their abuser's bed. Most DV victims do not um, say, I can't promise I won't get physical again when they, they don't call the, the uh, their abuser a coward they don't sit there and say you're a coward when you walk away you're a coward she even said you had so and so you had so and so um book another hotel room for you in case we get into a fight you're a coward when you walk away and he's like that and he said things cannot get physical and she said i can't promise you that it just i don't know i don't know I don't know. Yeah, when Kate Moss gets on the stand, it will blow that case wide open. I hope they do bring Kate Moss on. Um, she taunted him. I mean, yeah, and all the love notes. Exactly. She was the one apologizing in all the love notes because she was the one getting physical. She never acted afraid. So there's literally videos of them on the red carpet where he looks scared. Um, and he, like, looks back at her and she, like, smiles and he's like, okay, okay. <laughs> Um, most TV victims dream would be their abuser walking away from a fight, not follow them around trying to keep it going on. Exactly. He wrote on the counter, it says, why be a fraud? He was on to all of them and their lies. Yes. She's committed perjury and three. That's another thing. Uh, the, the situation with the dog in Australia, she knew those dogs were not supposed to go to Australia. She knew that, but she took them anyways. And then when she got caught, she blamed it on Kate, her assistant that literally can't stand her, her assistant that literally said it was a nightmare to work for her. Um, right. Most most women that's abused or most people being abused don't tell their abuser, suck my, suck my, <laughs> suck my, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just, oh my goodness. I don't get it. Uh, and would you ever tell the person abusing you, suck my, suck my, suck my, you know what I'm saying? And just sit there. And, and would you ever say, why are you walking away? Don't walk away. You're a coward for walking away. So the, the person that beat you up when they're saying, I, I'm walking away, don't follow me. Do not come follow me. You would call them a coward. It just doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. It doesn't make sense. But the UK thing, she blamed it on Kate. She said, well, my assistant Kate was supposed to get all the paperwork in order for me to bring the dogs. And she didn't tell me that she didn't. She never told me that she didn't have everything in order, which was a lie. She called Kate and said, Kate, I need you to fill out this declaration for me, saying you were supposed to do everything for me and get it all in order and that you didn't tell me that you didn't. And Kate said, I'm not doing that. I'm not perjuring myself. I'm not lying for you. So she contacted Sterling and she said, Sterling, I need you to lie, write a declaration and say that it's Kate's fault. 
that you knew that it was supposed to be Kate that was supposed to get everything in order and that Kate didn't do it. And she never, but she never told me. And then she told Sterling, she said, basically she said, and your job depends on this. Like I would hate for you to lose this job because you didn't do this. So he did it. He filled out a declaration saying it was Kate's fault. But then later on, later on, he come out and said that that was not true. He said, I lied for her because she basically threatened my job. Uh, but it wasn't Kate's job to do all of that. Amber knew the dogs were not ready to go, that the paperwork, everything had not been completed. Um, but she took the dogs anyway. I know who would give their abuser a huge knife, right? Say until death. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. It just does it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Yes, yeah, she did this the whole time, literally from jump. She was, it, there's so much proof from jump. She acted this way. Police said no marks. They took pictures. There's, th there's the body cam. There was, that house was not a wreck. There was nothing there when they came. I don't agree. I think it would probably cause him anxiety to look at that woman who has tried to ruin his life when he gave her everything. He gave her a nice life. He did for her parents. He did for her friends. And then she just, you know, the thing is, is even if Johnny, because defamation is so hard to prove. So even if Johnny don't win this, Johnny's won the court of public opinion. If you go to social media, 95% of the world is on his side with this. Yeah, she hit her ex-girlfriend too and was arrested. Okay, so if you say, I'm a victim of DV. But I talked back and I chased, I was, I was chasing him, calling him a coward um, and telling him to suck my, then you may have been the one doing the, the abusing like that. You know what I'm saying? Like if he's literally, he ran to the bathroom, was trying to shut the door and she goes, oh, my toes. So he stops to check on her toes because she, he's like, oh my God, your, your toes. And when he lets off the door and goes to bend down to check on her toes. She rams the door and hits him right in the head. You know, I mean, she admitted to hitting him, right? It just doesn't make sense. He literally hid in five bad bathrooms, two bedrooms. She pounded on the doors, kicked the door in on his forehead, right? Unfortunately, you know, I don't like this statement. I really don't like this statement because addiction is a disease. And I think Johnny dealt with it. She did drugs as well. And I think she even admitted, didn't she admit to one of the therapists that she was, um, I know she, a bipolar, um, bulim or maybe anorexic bulimic. There were like a few things um, that she admitted to her therapist. But just because you're a cocaine addict doesn't mean you're a terrible person. And when you are being accused of something terrible that's ruining your life, that the world can't back you up to say, we don't believe that you did that. Just because you've suffered with addiction, does that mean all of a sudden? Okay, let me, okay. I know someone, I know someone who has suffered with addiction for probably the past, 18 years, suffered with addiction, has been in rehab three times, and now is in jail for attempted uh, second degree murder. And I know what happened, and he was defending himself. So I don't think he should go to jail for attempted murder because he was defending himself. He was literally being beat with, with cinder blocks by like five or six guys. He actually, he was still uh, in recovery. He was in recovery. He had just gotten out of rehab, was living in a halfway house. Um, I don't have to date a cocaine addict. To, I know I, I, I actually have someone in my very close life that is still in the middle of addiction that I love very much. And if someone was to accuse him of beating on them when there was no facts to state that he did, 
just because he was a cocaine addict d does not mean that I would all of a sudden take their side. Like really? J so, okay. Because someone suffers addiction, all of a sudden they're the bad, they're the bad person. Addiction is a disease. Um, but anyways, the, the guy, um, so he was, he had gotten out of rehab. He was living in a halfway house. He was literally riding his bicycle to work every day for like two months. And finally he got a truck and he was doing better. And, um, he was set up, uh, someone said, Hey, can you bring me somewhere? And he said, yeah. So he brought this person somewhere and there was like five or six guys waiting for him where they attacked him with cinder blocks. They were literally going to kill this man. Hitting him with cinder blocks. The guy finally got away, beaten to a bloody pulp. And mind you, this guy has been an addict for like eight, 18 years or more, right? Suffering with addiction. Has probably done every drug, drug under the sun, right? Am I frozen? Probably done every drug under the sun. He jumps in his truck, beaten, eyes busted, swollen, you know, can barely see, and he takes off. But when he takes off, he accidentally runs over one of the men. Almost kills this man, right? And he's in jail. He's been in jail for like seven months. He's been in jail like seven months. And in a couple of months, his trial will start. Do I believe just because he has suffered with addiction for 18 years that I, I can't believe that he is innocent? I can't believe that that was an accident. That I, you know what I'm saying? No. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Try, it, it, you guys should see the pictures of this guy. You guys should see the pictures. I mean, it looks like he has a softball in his cheek. His eyes are busted, like just swollen and busted. And his whole side of his face is just swollen. And there's cuts all over his legs. He just jumped in his truck to try to get away. He had literally been out of rehab for like, two and a half months. He had been driving a bicycle to work until he finally got a truck. And then this happens. But because he was suffering with addiction for 18 years, all of a sudden I can't defend him. I can't say I don't believe he deserves this. I think that's a, I think that's BS. A lot of BS. Good night, Jelly Bean. I don't know who's trying to rumble with you. I know there's, there's a few people in here that just because uh, Johnny Depp did drugs. Um, they think that, you know, uh, he's guilty of everything and that we shouldn't support him. But I don't want you guys in the chat, you know, fighting back and forth. We can all have our, have our opinion and that's okay. Um, you know. Right, that right, the watcher. I think I can defend him. But someone in the chat was basically saying because he did drugs, we shouldn't defend him. You know, oh, ninety-five percent of the people on social media believe Johnny Depp. Or what is the world coming to pray for? You know, no, because we don't believe he did what Amber claimed that he did. Tell me how Amber Heard was beat over and over and over, punched in the face repeatedly. That's her words. He punched me repeatedly in the face, broken glass everywhere. My feet was all cut up. Johnny Depp wears these huge rings, but yet the next day she went on, uh, she was on TV and there wasn't so much as a mark. No, no, heck no. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. The evidence tells us different. I don't know how anyone could be watching this trial and believe that. Right. Johnny Depp's addiction started decades ago and no woman has ever accused Johnny of abuse. One accused him of throwing a bottle or tossing a bottle, but no one has ever accused him of abuse. He was with one woman for like 14 years. You know, no, I don't believe it. Exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent, CC. Like we all saw the pictures of Rihanna. You know what I'm saying? No. 
absolutely. First off, let me tell you something. My dad was an addict and my dad never got physical. My dad wouldn't even raise his voice. To this day, I've never heard my dad raise his voice. I, me and my sister put my dad through rehab about 10 years ago, nine years ago. My dad is separate with addiction on and off. He's he's clean now and he's been clean for several years. Um, but me and my sister put him into a very expensive rehab. And let me tell you something. My dad never so much as raised his voice to my mother. Him and my mother got a divorce when I was eight, but not because of no fussing and fighting and no craziness. My dad literally never raised his voice. My dad got remarried to a woman that cheated on him repeatedly over and over and over. She did it. My dad didn't have social media back then. This was when MySpace was big. Um, my, my space was it, Facebook was not a thing. Um, my space was a thing and my dad didn't have it. And his wife was literally openly flirting with men on my space. And I was a friend of hers on my space. Me and my brother was. And um, it, there was comments from uh, this one man about I had fun with you at dinner. And we, me and my brother started seeing all this stuff. So we started collecting everything and we drove up to where my dad lived and she was there because they were married and, you know, we visited with them and she left to go to the store and we presented all this evidence to my dad. We said, listen, this is what's going on on Facebook, uh, my space. All these men are talking to her. She had dinner with one of them. Here's the evidence. And he said, OK, thank you. all And we said, you need us to leave. And he said, no, stay, stay here. When she come back, he asked her to go into the bedroom to talk. I never heard my dad so much as raise his voice. He didn't even raise his voice, even though he had just been given all this evidence that his wife was openly basically cheating on him. Never. Not, nobody. I literally know a hundred of drug addicts and they all treat their women the same as J.D. did. I know plenty of them as well. I know plenty of them as well. Addiction runs in my family. Addiction runs in my family. And nope. The guy that I was telling you all about earlier that's in jail for, you know, that. No, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't beat up on his women. So, I, no, that, that's crazy. Where's the proof that he abused her? Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. Thank you, Barbara. Right. How you get hit by a grown man but have no marks? No swelling, no bruising. It doesn't make sense. Two cocaine addicts meet in a bar. One is rich and famous and older and knows how it goes, what how life goes. I'm, I'm, that confuses me because when you're in a bar and you meet someone, you probably don't know if they're an addict. You may not even have accepted the fact that you're an addict. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know what this person is dealing with and you may not even have come to accept the fact that you're an addict as well. And just because, you know, one's rich and famous, and but one's younger, it, you know, it doesn't mean they can't date. It, it just, I don't know, that's kind of weird to me. I'm not, I, don't know, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just going by the facts as well. It doesn't make sense to me. I mean, we saw Rihanna. Rihanna literally was beat to a bloody pulp and there was no denying it. She couldn't go nowhere. She couldn't go nowhere the next day, you know. I do believe that, Crystal. I do believe that. <laughs> Which is why I'm not getting like, uh, you know, a grown man with MRSA and his hand ain't hitting no one. I know, right? No sign of anything being broken. The metadata was all very inconsistent. And That's why they um, had the dates blacked out, right? I, I will say, you know, like a lot of times people that are in addiction, 
they hang out with a certain group of people. Sometimes, not all the time. You know, they hang out with a certain group of people. Like my dad was not one of those people that hung out with a bunch of junkies, so to say. You know what I'm saying? My dad has worked every day of his life since he was freaking 15 years old, pretty much. And you would never, you would have never guessed it. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of them, they will, you know, kind of hang out with that group of people. But my dad, he always had a job. He always, you just wouldn't have known. You know what I'm saying? Um. Yes. Um, I hope they bring her on the stand and rumor has it they're going to and she will literally blow the lid off Whitney Hurd's testimony when she when she uh, testifies. Hey, Jay Marie. Popcorn Planet um, held a stream where he had uh, victims of abuse call in. Um, and literally everyone that called in said it just doesn't make sense. That from their experience, it seems that Johnny Depp was the one being abused and not Amber Heard. Right. I got hit once and couldn't see for about a week because my eye was swollen shut. One hit, no makeup was covering right it just doesn't make sense he'll always be in recovery right he been able to remain private his entire career very private yep that's true that's another thing too is you know people may have had speculations of what he did or didn't do but nobody knew i had no idea that johnny depp had struggled with all of this you know um, and he knew this was all going to come out, but to clear his name from being a wife beater, an abuser, he, he did it. You know, he, he knew everybody's going to find out about drug use, all of it. Um, but one thing I can prove hopefully is that people know that I was not a wife beater. He would much rather be known as, you know, the man that abused drugs and, and that's, um, battle an addiction rather than the man that beat his wife, you know? Right. After the last fight, it, the fight where he supposedly assaulted her with a Magnum bottle, she wanted Johnny to show up at Coachella. Right. That's when, that was when he decided no more. Wynonna still got mad love for him. Right. I think I'm missing something. Okay, I'm trying to find it. Oh, that was another thing. She cheated so much. She cheated. Yeah, a lot. Like, I can understand, like, finally standing up for yourself, you know, saying you're not going to do this to me. Um, but you don't chase your abuser around saying suck my, suck my, and calling them a coward because they're walking away from you. You would want them to walk away. You would be like, thank God they're not, thank God they're not trying to continue this. Thank God they're, they're walking away and they're, you know, please let them stay gone. Please let them continue to walk away and cool down. So hopefully this will be the one time that we avoid a physical altercation. I feel like that's what she would be saying rather than you're a coward for walking away. You know, <laughs> I don't know.
Yeah. She didn't donate the money. She just pledged it. And it's been over a year. She had the money for over a year, but she did not donate it because she was going to keep that money. <laughs> Yes. Um, Johnny has said why he wouldn't look at her. Well, there was a recording where he told her, you will never look in my eyes again. But she said it's because he can't because he knows what he did It's because I survived him. That's why he won't look at me. And I'm like, girl, no. Yes, I did see the video from Law and Lumber where he debunks her broken bed theory. Yep. Check it out. She even left the knife on the bed. With her county, so many things we probably wouldn't even have known if it was just him suing her, including Poopgate. Yep, she called him a fat old man. I will put my cash app. I will put my PayPal first. Uh, someone asked for this. I'll put your cash app PayPal on Venmo. If anybody would like to donate to the channel, it would be highly appreciated. All donations are going either to the studio or to my trip to Arkansas that I will be taking. Any donations will go to one of those two things, you know, something that obviously benefits the channel more than likely the studio. Actually, we're going to be buying the paint either tomorrow or Monday. So, yeah, if you guys would like to donate, my PayPal is up right now. I'll uh, put Venmo and Cash App for anybody that would like to donate. If not, no big deal. Thumbs up, comment. You know, if you guys want to share it on your Facebook or something like that, share it on Twitter. Uh, for anyone else to watch, you guys are more than welcome. That, are, that would actually help me out a great deal. She wanted nothing, but now ask for $100 million, right? Yep, she flat out lied. Flat out loud. I watched that clip where she was like, um, where she said that all the money had been donated. I was like, girl, no, you didn't. Let's see. I don't think I have my Venmo. Um, Cece, do you have my Venmo? Oh, no. Doing your PayPal stuff was deleted from my clipboard from all the screenshots. No, because I don't have my Venmo. Let me see. Mm. Want to donate my mortgage like Amber. I know, right? Let's see. This may work, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'll click on that one and see if it works. That one maybe. Might not. Um I don't pay me to a house like age. I know, right? I heard Elon bug the Tesla he gave her. He didn't trust her if that's true. That is what she said. Uh, that's what um, Whitney told. That's what Whitney told. Um, wrote in her in her statement. Let me see if that works. My Venmo is a picture of me sitting here. Yep, that'll that'll take you to my Venmo. That one. It's actually me sitting right here. You can see the teal one. Um, and I have a black shirt on and my hair is up in a ponytail. I wanted to make sure that was correct. Oh, thank you, Matthew. I will take compliments just the same. Just the same. Um, will you be covering the tie Chris Lee Keys and his wife with the text right away? <laughs> what? Say that again, Dustin. I know, right? JD looks real dangerous passed out um 
Johnny Cash, Elvis, addicts didn't mean they abused their family physically. Right. Once upon a time, or exactly. Thank you, Elle, for your hard work. Good night, everybody. Good night, The Watcher. Yes, I'm about to get off as well. This is why Johnny is suing her, because no matter what, people will still think he beat her. That's what happens. That's what happens when something like this is put out there. Um, people just latch on to it, and there will always be... Um, that's true, Jen. If Elon abugged the Tesla, he is so smart. I don't think she would have figured it out. She was probably just being paranoid or she she needed a reason to paint him in a negative light. So probably, that's probably what she told her parents. He abused her while he was asleep. I know. Thank you, Amanda. Tell her, yes, the one where it was clearly a hotel and he's right next to the bed, just like she put... The man put the man in bed. What are you talking? Were you taking pictures of him when he passes out? It makes no sense. And he even said one of the one of the pictures he had been working for like twelve hours came home exhausted. His hand was in his pocket. He was not partaking in the ice cream or whatever. I lose my faith in humanity. I know, right? But like I said, you know, did you look into adding a join button on your YouTube app? I do think it was funny she wrote the op-ed after she got the full $7 million. I know, right? Like, girl, you should have left that alone. Miranda, good night. Hey, Miranda. Yep, that's exactly why she, she didn't donate to this charity that she used when she needed someone to say, oh, Amber's a great person. She helps out our charity. And this was a, a small charity. So a donation like that could have been huge for them. You know, but and the reason she didn't donate to that charity is because it it wasn't going to get that much press. Donating to the ACLU got international international news. You know, you know what, you know that if you ever work a trades job, she wanted to make sure she got that money first before she again defamed him and further abused him. Yep, I know, right? That's what I said. Like my water bill was due. I called him like, can I just pledge it to you guys? I'm just going to pledge. I'm going to pledge $5,000 to you guys towards my water bill. Anyways, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and call it a night. Donald Trump's first question made me feel embarrassed by me and him. Amber's second. Are you going to be covering the Chris Lee likes tax? Oh, the Todd Chris Lee tax fraud? Because they're being super tax fraud to make face 30 years. I do know what you're talking about, and I may. I'm not sure. I think it's actually happening right now. Yeah, exactly, Lisa, exactly. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Thank you to everyone that hopped on tonight. I appreciate it so much. We're getting closer to my studio. Like I said, Tuesday, I'm going to be on the road all day. I'm going to be driving up to Arkansas. Wednesday, I'm going to be at Josh Duggar's trial already started the thing. i'm gonna have to look into that um if you guys don't mind on the way out give this video a huge thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and until next time i'll see you guys later bye everyone